Mona, uh, John was talking a little bit about that you had a message for the team out there. Can you just kind of share and, and what kind of motivated you for to, to deliver that message? Um, actually, uh, what, what motivated uh, me and Lamar were talking in the training room the other day. Um, but just talking about, you know, a, a quick message just, you know, I think to win a Super Bowl, you know, you got to put a lot of time and effort in. And I think, you know, while we, we got in some good work, OTAs, minicamp, you got this big break, whether it's you want to hang out with your dog a lot, want to hang out with your girl a lot, want to hang out with this, try to do as much of that as you can because when we come back, we want everybody to be putting as much time into football as you can. You know, the off seasons are long, plenty of time, but when you, you don't, these days, these practices, you know, being in the NFL, it's a, it's a very short span compared to the rest of your life. So I know that's one of the things that I plan on, you know, making different, uh, different in this season, putting as much time as I can than I, than I ever have before. So, you know, I think we can all echo that, be on the same, you know, one accord. I think special things can happen with this team. Going, going along with that, it seems like your team, uh, this was your vocal leadership, the Studio 44 thing you do, is this what you envisioned when you were a rookie? having ownership, you know, taking leadership of the team? It's, um, it, it's, it's definitely come full circle. Uh, when I first got here, I mean, I just had, you know, Sizz, you know, Weddle, B. Carr, Jimmy. I honestly didn't see it then because there were just so many guys that were those leaders for me that I still, you know, you know, look up to, guys that just put so much in my ear. But it, it was, you know, the, the last year or two, you know, you start realizing – you're telling stories and nobody else was here other than you. So, uh, you know, it, it's you, you, you kind of, you know, you feel like a young guy and then you realize you're not a young guy. Yeah, you guys coming up, man, I watched you in, in high school. And I'm like, OK, like, what are you what are you trying to say? So um, you, you kind of just realize, you know, it, it's kind of your time to do that now. And, you know, I think, you know, that being here for, for so long and, you know, getting a second deal, I think that was something that kind of was the unwritten thing that they expected me to do. And I think um, it's a challenge at times, but with these, it's a challenge with these young guys sometimes, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of my duty to, to do that. And um, so I just try to do the best I can. So much attention about the offense and Todd Munkin. From your perspective, how do you think it's coming along? What have you seen from it? How, how encouraged are you lining up against it for the last couple of weeks? That looks good. You know, it's, um, We've, it's been, we've had a year or two, to me, to where on paper, you know, we look scary. Um, I think the product we put out, you know, that, that, that's really all that really matters. But on paper, man, we look very scary. And that's uh, – I know when I go into the season, you know, obviously before the season even starts, you look at everybody you play, you're like, okay, they've got a core. They've got a core. They've got this. They've got this. And then we're, we're one of those teams. So the only thing I feel for us – you know, we got the pieces. It's just putting them together, working together, figuring out how it works, and, you know, putting out a product. You know, I think it's really easy to talk about all the great receivers we got, all the great running backs we got, all the great DBs we got, the good D-line. But I think this is a year of just proving it, you know. Um, you know, Lamar gets a big contract. Let's prove it. I get a big contract. Let's prove it. Roquan gets a big contract. Let's prove it. So I think, you know, we got a lot of good players. But to me, I just want to prove it. OBJ is one of the bigger names that's been added to this roster. You guys have had battles going up against each other in game. What's it been like to go up against him in practice? Uh, it's been good. You know, uh, uh, meeting him um, in the offseason, actually, uh, at uh, Javante Davis's fight. Um, meeting him then, and then, you know, uh, anytime I meet a guy that just signed our team and the first conversation you have is about a Super Bowl is, uh, is a really good thing to me. You know, I, I know his mind's right. Um, I've been talking to him as he's been training. Um, up there with Saquon and everything. So I know his mind's right. I know when we come back, uh, we're all going to be just ready to go training camp, get the battles going, him and all the guys we got. Um, I'm just really excited to get some really good work in and training camp with some really elite receivers, uh, him and along with the other guys that we've had here and the other guys we've signed. So really excited for that. Marlon, uh, did, was it brought up the, uh, the on-field scuffle at all between you guys? Uh, he, he said in training camp he's going to have to throw me a jab. So... <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that, but um, once we get that out of the way, it'll just be uh, competitive battles after that. Marlon, you talked about the contracts that guys can come back and, and the leaders are back to include yourself. Have you had during this OTAs or mini camp just time to kind of reflect on just how many questions there were in the last season and, and how you guys have been able to maintain this degree of continuity that um, you know, I think a lot of guys feel is going to be competitive this fall? Yeah, I think we, we, we haven't had those. Um, conversations but 
you know, I was, I was very, and that was actually one of the messages um, Coach Harbs and uh, EDC had with us when we started minicamp um, was just this offseason, they felt more than ever, and I felt as well look, outside looking in, they felt more than ever we put a roster together that should be able to compete for a Super Bowl. And I think that's, to me, I think Ravens fans, everybody has, has seen a difference in that. You know, you, you pay the best quarterback in the league, you get Odell, you, you put all these pieces together. The talent is there, it's just putting it all together. So um, I, I've been very pleased with the front office, what they've done this offseason, you know, I think. And so that, that's the biggest thing. That was the whole point of my message. Let's not waste this window. You know, we all know windows open and they close very quickly. So let's not waste this opportunity because we got a really good opportunity in front of us. Marlon, what have been your impressions of Rob coming in and looking like he's going to start out on the outside opposite you? Looks good. I really liked some of the, the corners we've signed. Um, I knew we were probably going to sign one or two. Um, got, got Trey, got Rock, KYU. It's actually Q, but I call him KYU. But I um, really, really like, I, I think in, in the secondary, man, we just want to – Figure out who can be, doesn't matter if you're a safety, doesn't matter if you're a safety playing this, no matter if you're a corner. We want to get the best six DBs on the field. Um, how you can do that, we got a lot of different pieces. So how you spin it around, we kind of want to be to where anybody can play any position. Um, and so I think we got some really good pieces to be able to do that. He's a strong guy. So I'm, I'm a fan of how strong he is, how he, he plays really tough, you know, as, as we've talked. He just, we, we both kind of built from the same cloth as far as, you know, the physicalness, don't really care if you get beat. You know, you want to have you want to have corners and DBs that don't have any egos. You know, you get beat, you come, get to the line, you play the same way. You're not worried about this, you're not worried about that. You don't care who makes the play, you're just wanting somebody to make the play. So I really like, you know, Rock's mindset, um, Marks' mindset. I mean, I've been, it's been a year with him, but I love his mindset as well. So the guys we got, um, you know, we lead them the right way. We get going, and uh, there's going to be a lot of good battles. Marlon, Marlon, there have been a lot of headlines about guys that are in the league getting investigated for gambling. Um, Harbaugh said that uh, Eric talked to you guys about that when he did talk to you on Monday. Do you worry about that at all? I mean, do you think there's any sort of lack of clarity among the guys about what you can do and what you can't do, or, or do you think it's pretty straightforward? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot been going on, but, you know, Coach did talk about that. Um, Coach and uh, EDC talked about that um, in, in the meeting, so um, hopefully that's the end of that. Well, you did mention about like the offense and kind of the weapons they put around Lamar. I mean, are you interested in seeing what now Lamar can do as far as you know, even elevating his game as far as passing and throwing the ball with everything they've done around him? Yeah, I mean, he's got he's got a lot of good pieces, um, obviously, um, but I'm really excited for how all that meshes. Obviously, we all know the talent Lamar is, you know, new OC, uh, you know. A lot, a lot of new things. So I think Campbell will be really good to, to get a to good vision. But, you know, everything looks good on paper right now. And I'm so excited for us to just put in the work and really earn that and just go out and prove it. Marlon, I know at this stage of your career, you've, you've done a lot individually. Do you, are you still at the point to where individually you're still trying, that there are still goals that you want to achieve? Yeah, there are. Um, for me, it's just, it's it's always, it's always really accomplishing to feel like you're one of the best in the league. And I feel that, you know, we all know it's a passing, it's a passing league. It's a passing league. So if you can defend the pass, you're going to have a pretty good chance. So for me, I know if I can play my best football, we have a really good chance of winning football games. So that, that's the biggest thing for me. There's no, you know, my dad all the time played in that Super Bowl. I don't know how bad they lost, but it was pretty bad. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do that, trying to, you know, get out of those footsteps, but, but be on the other side celebrating. So for me, uh, individual accomplishments are great. But for me, I just want to be able to play my best football to give our, chan our team the best chance at winning. We see you over sometimes uh, by the golf cart talking with Steve a little bit. What are some of the conversations that you have? <laughs> you know, we have some good conversations, uh, Mr. Bashadi. I've Honestly, if, if I'm really being honest, we were talking about – Ladies, specifically my lady, you know, is giving me some advice on love, actually, believe it or not. At football practice, we were talking about love. So um, he, gave me, he gave me some good advice um, there. I, it's, I have a very unique relationship with Shadi, Harbs, EDC. I've actually told all three of these men about my love life. So um, 
I got I got a special lady. I've been pro- just about everybody in the building knows. Really not really, but it's uh, yeah, that's what we were talking about. It was a pretty good conversation. Um, but um, you know, I just love it here. Honestly, I I, I can't really stress it enough how they've you know brought me in came in at 20 you know I've really tried to earn you know these guys respect honestly I've just tried to come do things the right way you know I I say I say often I really don't say often but I said it the first time the other day but I just feel like I'm a product of my parents and um, you know I was I got lucky enough to get to be fortunate enough to get really a really good mom and dad and um, you know I just try to not shy too much away from you know their teachings and you know, a product of my environment as such. So um, just being able to come in and be honest and talk to, to guys like that that have, that have welcomed me like, you know, their own, it's uh, it's really just been a blessing to me. The Ravens playing Rashad Monk, and obviously I'm sure you have some experience watching Alabama, Georgia these past couple of years. What's exciting about that offense? I guess I do not know him at all. I haven't got to know him that much. Um, I was actually, I was, you know, you, you learn coaches about what they, you learn coaches a little bit about what they wear. You know, they're they're a sweater, they're a short guy, they're a hat guy. It's how, he's a, he's a little bit of a runner. You know, what I mean, I don't use him when he's running. That means we did something bad. So, and he's a Georgia guy, so we're not on the best terms as of now. But you know, hopefully he can do more running during the season, less in training camp for us, and uh, we can be on a uh, really good foot. Marlon, you One mentioned uh, how how home you feel here, especially your second contract. And- um, you mentioned the Gervonta fight, you were at Orioles games early this, this offseason, and went to Preakness. And how um, important to you is it to kind of go to these things around the area and, and feel settled um, in this community? And is that something you try to encourage other guys in this community? Um, yeah, it's really cool uh, getting to go to you know, Orioles games, you know, meeting Orioles players, going to the tank fight. I see this guy celebrating really aggressively. And then it's Ray Lewis right in front of me. I'm like, I don't know how I didn't see this still swole guy in front of me, Ray. But um, it, it's really cool to, to do those things um, in the city. It's just the more I, I hang out, you just realize, you know, Baltimore and the Ravens are just one, you know what I mean? So that's, that's, the, that's been the really cool thing, um, going to different events and, and Preakness. And it, it's really cool, you know, I think, you know, when I was coming from Alabama, it's all about Alabama football. So um, just having a pro team to root for, Playing for a team that you know it's nothing but love. It's um, it's pretty cool. So, and then moving down, moving downtown has really sparked a lot. I've, I've really got to see the city a lot more. Um, just going out to eat, different things, just being able to walk around. So, it's a cool city uh, for me. I, I really enjoyed it and uh, look forward to you know this being home for a really long time. We have to have one more, please. Marlon, what have you learned about yourself within these past couple weeks? Past couple weeks. Past couple weeks, football. It doesn't matter. I see you're, you're a lover boy, not a city boy. Yeah. I'm, uh, communication. A lot off the field, the lady, but also on uh, in the building as well. Uh, I've actually, it's it's been um, communication breeds understanding. I had a couple poor communications on the field couple times but that's okay but uh that, that's going to be a big thing I think going forward coming back on the field just communicating 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 as loud as you can and I'm already a loud guy so that's really shouldn't be too hard for me to communicate but um I think communication is key whether you're telling somebody to jog off whether someone's telling you to jog off the field little things standing your break commu- just communicating talking unnecessarily is never a bad thing in football so past couple weeks love life communication football communication and uh Everything else, just communicate it. Be loud and proud. That's all I got. Woo!